Naga, though, he's trying to fight everybody out of both spike clicking away, but he can't take everybody. Chuan's low, but Navi players are dying. Three's dead. GG's gone! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the International Dota 2 Championships. And we're going in today... You want to do the one? Six? Yes. Say six. Should have um, each done a three. Would have been way better. <laughs> that was a bit cool that would have been. Fingers. I know. I just I have one left. It might have two meanings to it. Um, yeah, it's uh, the second day of playoffs. We're going to be uh, heading into finding out who is actually going to be going to the international in some shape or form. But before we go over all the brackets and show you all the wonderful things, how are you doing, Bruno? I'm doing great. It's the final steps. We're almost there to the final day to see who will be going to Seattle and especially who will be going to be the invited team that's going to play no matter what in the International 3. All the teams that have been here have been proven to be really, really good teams and the three that are playing today especially. And you're looking at my hair. What's wrong with my yeah, because it's like, it looks so soft and, and dry. And my, I tried drying my hair, but it's still wet. Look at my hair. I want to sit next to wet hair so I can't complain. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> camera <laughs> go. What's happened with the camera? It's Someone knocked uh, the camera. Geez. Ruined the magic here. Yes. At day six. Hashtag Don't production. Worry. Just look at that. Um, Alright. I want to sit next to Wepaz. Yay! There you go. <laughs> Wepaz, what was it like uh, uh, riding here on your uh, motorbike at 100 miles an hour? <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> the wind blowing in my hair. You know the sad part is, is I was on the back, and no one's going to be able to know. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, guys? I'm doing good. Looking yeah. forward to the games today. Of course, we got three teams left, so this is really crunch time for everyone. Make sure you pull out all the stops. And I wanted to also mention, I brought this up yesterday. Mm -hmm. Even if you have pocket strategies that you're preparing for TI, you still want to use them now mm -hmm. because you're going to have oh, a lot yeah. more time to pre prepare after. I mean, let's so. be fair. Uh, it's it wasn't ready a few weeks. Ago that the 6.78 will be before the international three. Yeah, uh, I first said it in one forum. I don't know, but there it was there. It's public knowledge. What point is there in having a pocket strategy for a game that's probably going to change a lot in the next couple of months? Sure. So just go there. This is the important tournament. This is what matters. Just surprise us because we want to be surprised. Yeah, and the teams that are able to surprise us today on day six, we can take a look at the brackets and show you what's going to be coming up. Going to be kicking off the first game at 5.30 CET, so just about 25 minutes until we get that game live. Uh, it's going to be Rock's Kiss versus DD Dota. Now, they were both in Group A. <coughs> they didn't actually play each other, I believe. If, that, if that's the case. No, they, they dodged. No yeah, exactly. uh, AL knocked Rock's Kiss down. So this is the first time they're going to be competing against each other. Rock's Kiss managed to beat out Evil Geniuses 2-1. In a very close matchup, definitely one to watch if you haven't already seen. You can check out the VODs. I think we've got a map on uh, youtube.com slash good esports. That's GD esports. Mm -hmm. All the VODs are up there thanks to our community uh, management run by Metabi and his boss, Dern. Uh, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, so Rock's Kiss, a very close game, got up to the upper bracket finals. DD Dota, a very convincing win. Very strong. They look great. They haven't lost yet in the time. Yeah, some people have been speaking to about God Black and to God Black, and apparently he's prepared for every team. Yep. He's ready to take them all down in terms of uh, captaining. Well, you need to be. I mean, yeah. honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we looked at EG the other day, and everyone was like, man, EG looks so good. And then EG, they, I mean, they flopped yesterday. There's nothing else you can say, two in a row. So, I mean, DD, now they're the ones who are pressured. They're the last ones that we consider to be high tier other than Mouse who are basically going to be left inside of the qualifiers. So the pressure's on them. Rocks, Kiss, they're kind of the underdogs, certainly with a lot to lose in this case. I wouldn't use that old analogy here, but I feel like Rocks, Kiss might feel a tiny bit more comfortable taking out one of, you could say, the favorites of the whole thing. Yeah, but still, even though they're in the upper bracket, Rocks, Kiss are considered by many the team that's got to still prove themselves mm -hmm. to make it to the final two. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say that you have to prove yourself when you have people like Dread, Solo... And uh, surprises from this tournament, like Banscore, that has been playing super, super well. And of course, BGC is perfect, the guy that if you give him Gyrocopter, he will get the first blood yeah. every single time. 
Yeah, he's really messing up the compendium. Yeah. How is the compendium doing in the prize money, by the way? Oh, it's uh, over 2,050,000, so I'm guessing we'll be getting to 2.1 million before the West qualifiers, and who knows how far we'll get after these qualifiers as well. So yeah, looking forward to these qualifiers. This good. is day six. We've only got two more days for the Western qualifiers to get down today to our final two teams. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we're going to know who's going to be directly qualified for the international and which team will have to play the uh, second place of the Eastern qualifiers, yep. which will be the wild card match happening in Seattle over, um, over with Valve, who mm -hmm. will obviously be organizing that. So also to look at Mouse Sports, their run yesterday on the brackets, you can see that they were able to beat out EG. Yes. Uh, this is a team that consistently can play well, but at the same time, I'm just like I looking at trance. No, I'm actually talking about the bracket. You do have the brackets from yesterday, trance, because they are the brackets that we're using today. Yes. Great. <laughs> Got trance. It. Waking Nailed up it. Here. <laughs> I was just like, I was just talking. I was like, they're going to come up in a minute. And Chan is just sat there going, he's shaking his head. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what's happened? Is the overlay <laughs> system broke? And Trans just, uh, Trans having too much Dota uh, currently in his blood. So, uh, yes, but Mouse Sports yesterday, they only had to play one match versus Evil Geniuses, a 2 0, a very close matchup. But Mouse Sports came out really strong. But again, EG didn't necessarily play, play to their full potential. And I think a lot of fans out there, EG fans, are particularly sad that their tournament ended yesterday yeah. for the international. But what do you make of Mouse Sports' chances, even if they're in the lower bracket? I think if you're Mouse Sports right now, you really want to be going up against Rock's Kiss. I mean, Didi, they haven't really shown a whole lot of weakness so far, at least in terms of their performances. So if I'm Mouse and I'm in the lower bracket and I'm one match away, I really don't want to play against Didi. That's my biggest fear. Yeah, I agree. Um, at least with Roxkis, you know what you're getting into. I mean, Roxkis, they have lost to AL. Of course, it was just a pocket strat. Um, they couldn't play against Miguel's Slark, which played really, really well. But you know that this team has lost already. So you say, well, if someone else beat these guys, we can definitely beat these guys. In the case of Didi Dota, it's more of an inco like it's really hard to say because these guys are playing really good. They only dropped the map mm. during all the tournament. I mean, you have to go really, really creative to try and beat them. And uh, Didi Dota knows this as well. They know that they are very confident, and it's going to be tough to just break them. Yeah, they even said they were confident if they were going to play EG as well, and they were ready for that, yeah. but they didn't actually have to. Um, Webhaz. Hmm? Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. I wasn't concentrated there. Sorry. What were you concentrating on, Webhaz? I was looking at the chat for when you made your joke about the hair and shit. Did they laugh at you, Wapaz? I don't know. <laughs> Are they laughing with uh, Did I interrupt you, Wapaz? <laughs> um, yeah, but it seems like DD Dota are prepared for everybody in terms of Mouse and Rock's Kiss. Yeah. Wapaz, what do you reckon Rock's Kiss's chances are versus DD Dota? I still feel that they have a chance to win. It's just that DD has been looking like super strong and they haven't. I believe they never played each other, right? No, mm -hmm. they. Since Rock's Kiss knocked out. We covered that moments ago, down. but yeah, yeah keep I know, going, I know. Let's but keep going. <laughs> I know, but you repeat shit every time, anyway, so... <laughs> so hey, where's this attitude coming from, <laughs> Wefez? I'm not, I'm not the one starting it. Cool it's cool hair. I'm not the one starting it. I was just pointing out facts. <laughs> I'm the fact man. He's the stat man. Together we are the... Cut man. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest bullshit is in eSports. Yeah, thank you, Scrooge. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, I still saying. feel that, like, the way that Didi plays, we're just, like, going for... Their drafting is just like purely counter picks, pretty much. They bait out heroes like Mag and like gyrocopters and stuff like that, and they just try and counter pit it, pick it. And I think that BCC really has to like think through his drafting to be able to have a proper chance. I mean, they can for sure beat him in a straight up game. They're good enough at that, and mm -hmm. we've seen them play like really, really good, especially against EG. So they just have to not get really outdrafted, I feel. All right. We'll see if that's uh, going to be the case. But I believe as well that Rock's Kiss should be able to uh, put up a really good fight, if mm -hmm. not even take the game, if they're able to get on the terms that they want when the game starts in terms of the ban and draft. Um, but we should actually, if you haven't seen what happened yesterday, if you didn't get to catch day five, which is the first day of playoffs, we do have a nice recap video for you to highlight some of the best moments from yesterday. And here it is.
might even be very close to a GG because of the fact that the Aegis is still going to be there. They go on Yul straight away. The Hand of God is pop. Yul going to pop that Ghost after taking no damage from the Flag Cannon. A double BKB is coming out. Solo, he gets the double RP. He's going to pop the Refresher. It's another double RP right on top of that. J.O. and Demon both caught inside. Immaculate play coming out from Solo this game. And I think that's going to be it for EG in game number two. They might be able to get him here unless the Omni Slash Silence is going to come out. And Fear with a blink in, he's gonna get the impale off. Can they actually save Solo in the situation? He's just barely going to go down. Van score gonna be the next one to drop. BZZ, he gets RP'd in with y'all. It's a buyback, a double RP coming out from Bambo. Can they get BZZ down fast enough? There's just buybacks all over the place on the side of Rock's Kiss. Four buybacks, Dread, he finds Demon. As Solo actually manages to pick off Fear outside of the base. And we can see Magnus actually, oh, going to see an Omni Slash go out in the middle lane. Demon actually eating the entire damage by himself, just going to run away from his own team. Going to be giving away a kill, has to buy back, he's going to start running back. Not really sure what EG is doing right now. This could be the EG curse, it could be the EG throws Bambo, he pops the refresher, he gets a three-man RP for Vanscore! He steals the RP but only hits one! Unfortunate timing by Vanscore, beat is incredibly low, Bambo gonna be low himself, disruption actually on the beat is JO, getting chased out, BZZ, he's gonna pick up a double kill, they're gonna be able to kill JO on top of this! Unbelievable turnaround coming out from Rock's Kiss, what the heck are EG doing right now? BZZ actually teleports back to base, he wants to try to make something happen, but the throne is actually almost gonna be exposed here, and you can see JO does not give he does not care about that spin, like not even a little bit. Jail, he actually just pops his ultimate, pops the BKB, he's hitting on the tier 4 right now. Rock's Kiss, they have to go. They cannot wait any longer. BZZ goes in, he pops the BKB, he's gonna pop a Satanic as well. It's Satanic versus Satanic fight. Bambo still looking for a possible RP opportunity. It's gonna be a skewer in. The RP actually gets cancelled by the lasso in Dread. He's actually gonna be able to get the kill. BZZ with the double kill. There's buybacks all over the place. Four buybacks straight away on the side of EG. Bro, like, this throne is naked at this point in time. BZZ is going to have to do quite a bit of damage. They want to go in. There's a Soul Catcher on BZZ. Actually gets stunned out by, of course, the Carapace. Now Solo Ego's in. He wants to find an Omni, but it gets cancelled, actually, at BZZ. He's got to make a kill. Beat is the first one to drop. Bambo looking for the RP. Not going to find it. BZZ he picks up the double kill, and there's buybacks already coming out. It looks like Dread is actually going to buy out. And Fear, he pops the Carapace. BZZ not going to be attacking into it. He turns around, and I think that might have just been enough for Rock's Kiss. could be huge and that's go. only a little bit behind Silent but this is the last engagement and Soksha gets in and gets Quarva with the cogs they're gonna hold black in place just for a moment and no Fiends Grip still on black and RP comes in but Mouse Sports just seamlessly dropping one after one carries the jam Here we go. with his mech. Black goes into Fada will they do something about this? Oh. And they are gonna go in and Fada will get a knife silence off black comes out but instantly gonna be lassoed and he'll be going down most likely soon to the Silent Illusion. He does rage and get away, but there's a Diffusal Blade. He's going to drop as well. So Fata and Black both going down. And miraculously, Funzy lives with such little HP as Silent picks up a triple kill. This is the last stand in game one. Yeah, and the supports are unkillable at Mouse Sports, uh, currently both with a Ghost Scepter. Uh, but they are going to pick up Black and they're going to go straight on him. Demon pops his BKB but instantly backs off and there comes a nice cooldown. Yeah, and there's going to be a Fiend's Grip on a Jail along with the Lasso. They manage to focus him down straight away. The Spite Laguna Blade coming out from Cinder and when Demon was at basically no health. It's actually going to be three down on the side of EG. Roshan. And they could be able to. In comes no, uh, Rocket Flare and Mouse Sports are going to want to engage. This could be the last fight for EG's tournament. Demon, he's going to get engaged on. Demon, can he get the RP off? He manages it quick, but looks like Cinder is actually going to get the first kill of the fight. J.O. Oh, going to get no. bursted down immediately. No reaction whatsoever coming out of EG. The Rapier's on the ground. Roshan not even dead. And it's a huge team wipe coming in the favor of Mouse. And EG called a good game. So you have it, some of the great moments of yesterday's games, and they really were great yeah. games as well. I can't emphasize that enough. Every team gave us their all. One of them, unfortunately, didn't seem to handle the pressure so well, which was EG, and they left us in the playoff stage, and we're down to three. And it is One of the favorites, if yeah. I may add. Mm. The big upset, really. The was. big upset of the tournament, yeah. Mm. Um, but... Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. agree? Yes. It's mm -hmm. great. You don't agree? No. Come on, why? Uh, I Honestly, I wasn't even paying attention at the very start, but I just disagree anyway. Okay. It's fine. So you just said it's that EG fine. was not a strong team. That's what you just... Right. 
Yeah, we'll go with You this. didn't post on the fear appreciation thread on Reddit, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't even know if I have a Reddit account. Hmm. Oh, shit. I posted I you being either. outed. You just did fortune. Or I mean, you... I did fear appreciation before that thread existed. So, technically, everyone else is a bandwagoner. Or, or you're a hipster. Or I'm a hipster. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a hipster. Probably a little bit of both. Yeah, I posted yeah. in there. Someone said they were still in the tournament. I said they're not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they're still That's in harsh. the lower bracket. I'm like, no, they're knocked out. All right, I haven't really got an answer out of that. Good contribution. It's, it's been amazing. You, you know, that any, thread was awesome karma? and having a good time. Wet Boss comes in. Boom, have you, have you even dead. read that thread? I read like half It's like 75% it. demon banter. Well, like everybody's bashing demon in that thread only. It's not even fair appreciation. It's like more like demon bashing. Well, people express themselves. They yeah, want of to course, but I mean, release what silly. they have inside their chests. Sometimes it's aliens, but I don't know what I'm talking about. So I was gonna say, yeah, aliens. That's the aliens. first thing that popped into my mind. Exactly. He's, he's, he's a bit of a cinephile, this guy. Yeah. Mm. Cinemorphs. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you were here. On Monday, when we actually introduced the whole tournament, uh, there was a really nice video which uh, McCormick did, and actually it's uh, most of the players saying something about what TI meant to them. Um, if you weren't able to see the video, you're going to see it again in just a bit, but also there were a few um, outtakes that couldn't make it into the final video, and one of those was particularly funny, and I wanted to add it here, but... First, if Trans can show us the original video, it's really short, yeah. it's about one minute. We're it, going right there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really worthy video to show again as well, because it still in, it embodies what it meant to the players, mm -hmm. the ones that didn't get through, but also some of the players who are still in the tournament, what it still means to them, yes. and even more so in the final stages. So here we go. Every single Dota event that we've played throughout the entire year has all been leading up to this one tournament. As an event, it's also important to me because it really shows what esports can be in the future. It's a big honor to take part in the Quidditch Dota tournament and also it's the best opportunity to prove myself and show it again as a team. Getting to TI3 would be a dream come true. The threshold is a tournament where every mistake matters. So uh, me and my team will show our best. I get to meet Walter White, aka Drasco, and crest his shiny head. The highest one for pretty much every player out there, and winning the qualifier would mean everything to me. International is my event of the year. Greatest experience in the world because I get to see Bruno style live and stomp Blitz in dance offs. And there, of course, you can still see some players in the tournament still. Mm -hmm. You've got Cinderin, who yesterday, yeah. it felt like he led his team to victory in many ways in terms of just controlling what was happening in yeah. the final game. You've got Vans, Core, you've got Dread, Dread. Uh, you've got some great players. And mm -hmm. you, you have an outtake for us? Yeah, uh, particularly if you heard Dread saying that the international is his event of the year. Uh, of course, it was the final take, but there was one before that, which we're going to show you right now. Hello, my name is Roxkis Dread. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rokskis Dread from Russia. For me, international is main event of the year. <laughs> I love that guy now. He's, he's quite a personality. I mean, there's no surprise that he's one of the most loved Russian players in the scene. Yeah, and when he streams, he gets amazing viewers yeah. as well. If you've yeah. ever been on Twitch TV, we are obviously using to stream here, but if you've ever been and just seen him when he's online, he's, yeah. he's uh, always up on the viewers. So whatever he says, it must be entertaining. But it's nice to see a bit of his personality coming out in the outtakes. Hopefully he doesn't mind us using him. Did you check? I didn't check. No, I, of course I did. He asked me <laughs> to have those outtakes. I mean, he actually sent me the first clip and I was like, I have this clip. This is kind of funny. Maybe you want to use uh, it. So. It was funny. 
Yep, and that's where we're going to be going first. Uh, Rocks Kiss versus DD Dota. But let's check out some tournament stats that you've mm -hmm. got for us. Yeah, let's go into the tournament so far. Um, so we have the tournament information. Right now, the players... If we remember J.O., that first day was super dominant with few deaths. He's still up there. He's second place in best players in terms of um, kills per game. He's 6.8 kills, but 2.6 deaths. He could not, of course, maintain the 0.3 that he had the first day. Up there, up top... It's BZZ, is perfect, the player from Rock's Kiss, with 8.6 kills per game, 556 GPM, that's a very, very impressive. And of course, third place, one of the other players that are still uh, on the run uh, on the tournament, it's uh, Funzi, with 6.3 kills and 446 GPM, impressive for them. Now, for the heroes of the tournament, of course, we can't forget about that Slark, that worked very well for y'all. A couple other teams have used him, and uh, mostly it have worked. It's 4-1 in five games played. <coughs> Keeper of the Light, always a strong support. Syndra, and yesterday, played an amazing Keeper of the Light in the last game. He was 6-0 and 11, particularly in that game. I think he was 6-0 and 10. I think it was 11. So. I think it was 10. Well, Actually, I think it was 11, too. So. I don't know. I'm going to look it up right now. Check. Wow. I'm going to make sure <coughs> you're all I ju I'm just saying that, because in my head, I've got number 10. But I don't think I'm right, but I want to challenge the stat man. Yeah, you just want to see me burn, but I won't give you that satisfaction. 6 0 and 10. 6 0 and 10. 6 0 and, yes. and, oh and 10. Didn't count. 6 0 and 10. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what memory. <laughs> Andy got it wrong too. Yeah, yeah, yeah 6 0 and 10. Andy had my back. Jesus. Just that's what I did. Nah, I went with this what I said. Syndra, you yeah, you, you I put my faith in the, the stat man. Yeah, I've just broke you down, man. man. I built you up. I've took you down. <laughs> I have to climb up again. <laughs> no, sorry. Right. sorry. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I wanted to bring that you up. But that <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You call me up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the circle of trust is broken here. All right, let's go back into the information, Bruno. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Everything, Please. Yeah, let's, I'm going to let's cry go back in the information, the, the tournament stats again. Um, Andy, I just want to talk about the players. In terms of best players, this is obviously just looking at kills, death, and assists. Yeah. Is any, like, anybody deserve to be up there in terms of who's not there and who's, um, how well have they actually been playing? Because we haven't got Black up there as well. I feel like BZZ, he is definitely you know, deserving. You know, he's got that gyrocopter play. Sure, he plays it a lot. But in the games that he played it, especially versus EG, that one game, it's like his performance actually kind of won in the game because he knew exactly where to stand in every single team fight. His positioning was perfect, and you keep smiling at me, and it's making me nervous. It's making me nervous, James. I don't <laughs> like it when you smile at me. But continuing on about BZZ, um, his play for me was actually nothing short of miraculous, and J.O. was pretty much in the same position until his stats went from something ridiculous to close to 10, 0, and 13 to... Now his stats are halved and his KDA has gone down significantly. So overall, I feel like all these players do deserve to be up here. But the one is kind of the unsung hero for me is Funzi. Because Funzi's performance, it's hard to say that he had a standout game because everyone from BD plays well. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to eclipse somebody else in terms of individual player skill. So not that he doesn't deserve to be up there, but I feel like it's harder to tell just because of how his team functions. Mm. Mm -hmm. And in terms of world heroes, which is the last thing we'll talk about, the impressive thing is that Nature's Prophet and Magnus, two heroes that most teams favor, are not doing particularly well. Just 33% win rate, uh, 4 and 8 with uh, Nature's Prophet. A hero that hasn't been used like we normally see him, just like an offlane and jumping into a tri lane to make a 4v3 situation against an aggressive or defensive tri lane. Uh, and also the Magnus, of course, this huge impact hero that has uh, the big RP that can change uh, the tide of the battle. Not being as great of a hero right now with just 4 and 7. Yeah, actually, I think you got that wrong as well because you put games played for Magnus and you've got 11. Mm -hmm. uh, four, 4 and 7, it's actually 10. He only played 10 games. Because Bambo picked him, but he didn't play. Ah, I see what you did. Ah, you thought I was. I wouldn't question your stats, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> he was really worried there for a second. He's like, oh shit, he got it right once. Um, okay, yeah, so 
Some interesting tournament stats, and I think uh, Koiver as well has been playing amazing. Yeah. Fatter too. Yeah. The whole of Mouse Sports really came together as a team yesterday. They're, of course, going to have to do that today. Uh, we're going to be kicking off the game in just a couple of minutes, so uh, what we can do is we can just bring out the brackets, get ready, get them in the lobby, and get ready to press enter. So we'll literally only be gone for a minute uh, tops because yeah. I think uh, all the teams are going to be ready. But when we come back, we're going to be kicking off Rock's Kiss versus DD Dota, the upper bracket finals here of the playoff stage. We're Winner will be going to the international. That is what's on the line for both of these teams. So join us in just a minute as we get the game started.